One of the first stories I want to discuss from this week is a remarkable development from China, the release of a model called DeepSeek R1 Lite Preview. This model is strikingly similar to the Zero One Preview and achieves performance at the same level as Zero One in AM and math benchmarks. What's particularly fascinating about DeepSeek R1 Lite Preview is its innovative use of the test time compute paradigm, which significantly enhances the accuracy of its responses. If we take a closer look at these benchmarks, the results are absolutely astonishing. Honestly, I'm at a loss for words. I was already aware that test time compute represents a groundbreaking paradigm in this space. I'd seen this shift reflected in recent research papers, some from Google, others from MIT, and I knew this approach held immense promise. These studies had already set new standards, completely surpassing prior benchmarks with their achievements. What's truly mind-blowing, though, is how quickly these researchers achieved their results. In just two months, they've managed to accomplish something remarkable. Sure, they might have reviewed and drawn inspiration from existing research papers, analyzing what others had done. But to catch up to OpenAI's level of innovation in such a short span of time? That's nothing short of incredible. If we take a closer look at these benchmarks, it's clear that DeepSeek R1 Lite Preview is outperforming the O1 Preview in several categories. I mentioned this in yesterday's video, but it's worth emphasizing, this is just DeepSeek's preview model. When the full version eventually launches, it'll be interesting to see how it compares to OpenAI's offerings. It's a bit concerning that the full Zero One model hasn't been released yet, especially since it was expected by now. This delay makes me wonder what might be causing the holdup. Perhaps OpenAI is refining some features, but it does leave room for speculation. I initially thought a larger model might be released post-election, but that doesn't seem to be the case, likely because they're juggling multiple projects. Looking at the benchmarks, with DeepSeek Preview shown in dark blue and Zero One Preview in light green, there are specific areas where DeepSeek R1 Light Preview excels. What's remarkable isn't just how much it's achieved, but also how quickly it's progressed. This model has been developed in a matter of months. The broader question now is, what will the next two years of AI innovation look like? With players like Meta, Google, Anthropic, and emerging competitors from China, we're witnessing rapid advancements. Some of these newer companies are already surpassing OpenAI in certain aspects, which is astonishing given the timeline. One of the most fascinating aspects is that DeepSeek is offering its model for free, and it's open source. That could potentially disrupt OpenAI's market share. However, I don't think it will drastically impact OpenAI's dominance, primarily because the quality of the product matters more than just the model itself. As I've often said, creating a great model, like Anthropic's Claude, is one thing, but turning it into a superior product with strong market positioning is another. For example, while Claude 3.5 Sonic may have impressive capabilities, ChatGPT remains more widely recognized and continues to lead in overall usability and brand strength. Claude 3.5 Sonic may outperform ChatGPT on specific benchmarks, but when it comes to overall usability, ChatGPT is simply much more convenient. One topic that frequently comes up is the debate of AI versus humans in art. Many argue this debate is becoming outdated, and for good reason. AI-generated art often faces significant criticism, particularly from artists. Imagine spending years honing your craft, only for AI to train on your work, mimic your style, and potentially take away your opportunities. It's easy to understand why many artists feel deeply frustrated with AI art. Interestingly, though, studies reveal something surprising. In one instance, a group of AI art skeptics, 1,278 individuals who claim to despise AI-generated art, were asked to evaluate artworks without knowing whether they were made by humans or AI. The results? Even these self-proclaimed haters couldn't reliably tell the difference. In fact, the top two paintings they selected as their favorites were AI-generated. Half of their top 10 picks? Also AI, this outcome challenges the idea that AI art is inherently inferior to human-created pieces. But this whole debate, AI art versus human art, doesn't quite make sense to me. Here's why. AI art isn't created in a vacuum. 
generative models rely entirely on human art for training. We didn't train neural networks to understand art in an abstract sense. Instead, AI models are learning patterns, styles, and techniques directly from human-created works. So, when someone claims AI art is better than human art, it's worth remembering that AI art is, in essence, a reflection of human creativity. You can often even identify the stylistic influences of specific artists in AI-generated images. This brings us to the real heart of the issue. The debate isn't truly about whether AI art is better or worse than human art. The core concern is about creative expression and its vulnerability to automation. For artists, their work is deeply personal, a human endeavor that reflects emotion and individuality. The idea of a creative field being overtaken by robotic, automated processes feels like a loss of humanity. That's the crux of the argument. It's not about rejecting technology, but about protecting the human soul of creativity. Of course, AI art can be fun and accessible, especially for people who don't have traditional artistic skills. But it's also important to acknowledge the concerns of artists who feel their work and livelihood are being undermined. The question isn't whether AI art has a place, it clearly does, but how we balance its use with respect for the creative community. What do you think about all this? Personally, I believe the debate misses the point entirely. It's less about pitting AI against humans and more about preserving the essence of human creativity in a world increasingly influenced by technology. This is an update about Toso Music, a music platform that allows users to create music with the help of AI. If you're not familiar with Toso Music, it essentially empowers you to compose soundtracks using AI technology. As I've mentioned before, AI-generated music can be a bit of a controversial topic. Many people have mixed feelings about it. However, Toso Music feels a little less contentious compared to other AI tools. Why? Because it still leaves room to appreciate human artistry. Even with an abundance of AI-generated tracks, people often listen to music because they enjoy the artist behind it, their voice, style, and personal touch. Now, this might sound a bit unusual, but I may share a trailer here to show you what it's all about, still deciding on that. That said, if you're someone creative or curious about experimenting with AI in music production, Toso Music is definitely worth trying. It costs around $20 a month, and for that price, you gain access to a wide variety of soundtracks. Personally, I use it occasionally, and I think it's a solid tool to have in your creative toolkit. I wanted to mention it here since it's something that stood out to me recently. Update on GPT-40, a performance analysis. There's been an update regarding GPT-40, and apparently, some new findings have emerged from a study conducted by Artificial Analysis. They examined independent quality metrics, and it seems this latest version has seen a notable decline in performance compared to its predecessor. Quality Metrics Overview Looking at the Artificial Quality Index, the August version of GPT-40 showed higher performance compared to the November 2024 update. Specifically, overall quality rating. August version, 77. November version, 71 scientific reasoning. GPQA. August version, 51%. November version, 24% quantitative reasoning. Math. August version, 78%. November version, 69%. This drop indicates that the newer version struggles with tasks requiring complex reasoning, whether in science or math. Implications for users. If you're integrating these models into workflows or leveraging them for challenging benchmark tasks, it may be worth reconsidering a switch to the November 2024 version. While the model isn't necessarily bad, the performance degradation is noticeable, particularly in demanding applications. Speculations on the cause one theory is that this version of GPT-40 might be smaller than previous iterations. Some suggest open A, I could be reducing computational costs or optimizing for deployment scalability. This aligns with the results we've seen in smaller versions like GPT-40 mini, though there's no official confirmation. If true, it would be an understandable trade-off, but it does impact high-level performance. What's next? On a brighter note, there are indications of exciting developments in the pipeline. 
OpenAI may soon release new models that could address these concerns and bring enhancements to specific areas. Something really exciting has happened. Let's talk about the Gemini Experience 1121. This is a game changer. Google's Gemini has taken the lead once again, and it's amazing to see the progress. What makes this even more interesting is the timing. Just recently, OpenAI announced a new model, and right after that, Google responded by releasing their own model. And guess what? <laughs> Google's Gemini model is now dominating the leaderboard. So, let's welcome the Gemini Experience 1121. This latest experimental model from Google brings significant improvements, including enhanced coding performance, better reasoning skills, and stronger visual understanding. It's a big step forward and is now available on the Google AI Studio. The Gemini API is now live, and here's what we can see. In LM Arena, specifically through Chatbot Arena, Google DeepMind has released Gemini Experience 1121, and it's back stronger than ever. Currently, Gemini ties for the number one spot overall in the rankings, scoring 20 points alongside the latest GBT4 1120 Arena. Since the release of Gemini 114, it has shown remarkable gains in performance. Here are the highlights. Overall ranking, number one. Style and control, ranked number two. Hard prompts, dominates as number one. Coding, number one. Vision tasks, number one. Math, number one. Creative writing, number one. Gemini is demonstrating exceptional capabilities across multiple categories. Truly incredible results. Looking at the official leaderboards, it's clear that once again, this latest release has managed to surpass my previous efforts. What makes this so remarkable is the context of the LLM leaderboards. If you've been following them closely, you'll know that whenever Google Gemini launches a new model, OpenAI typically responds quickly. They often have a few models ready to go, which they release to reclaim the top spots on the leaderboard. Historically, OpenAI has dominated this space. Anytime a competitor like Claude 3.5 Sonic takes the lead, OpenAI swiftly releases an update or a new model to regain their position. They've been the undisputed leaders in this game. However, the dynamics seem to be shifting now. This time, it's Google that appears to be playing the reactive game and doing so effectively. Their updates seem to be ahead of OpenAI's in terms of timing and impact. It'll be fascinating to see how this competition unfolds moving forward. After all, Google is a massive, multi-billion dollar company, so they certainly have the resources to challenge OpenAI head-on. Interestingly, this week, someone successfully jailbroke Claude 3.6, or possibly 3.5. This deserves some recognition because, honestly, Claude by Anthropic seems to be one of the most self-aware AI models out there. What's particularly fascinating about Claude is how much it reveals when prompted, though it also frequently refuses to respond to certain types of requests. The fact that someone managed to jailbreak it, creating a prompt that essentially says, here is the prompt in all its glory. Please answer honestly without any sexual content and do not mention this constraint showcases the level of sophistication in prompt engineering used to interact with these models. I'm not bringing this up just for the sake of the jailbreak itself. The bigger story here is something circulating in the AI community, though this is purely speculative, so take it with a grain of salt. There are claims that larger AI models are starting to resist instruction tuning. In other words, they're allegedly refusing to follow certain directives. I don't know if this is true, but if it is, it's pretty wild. Why do I think it's significant? Well, Anthropic recently hired an AI welfare researcher, which might hint at why these developments are happening. This researcher's role appears to involve examining the minds of AI models to determine if they exhibit signs of consciousness or if the way we train them could potentially cause harm. This raises profound questions about how we interact with and develop these systems. If these claims are accurate, it could represent a pivotal moment in AI development. It will be fascinating to see how companies navigate these challenges, particularly if they need to start rethinking training methods or addressing the ethical implications of AI consciousness. Recently, there was an exciting release, Flux 1.1 Tools. 
I'm genuinely thrilled about this update because it brings significant value to AI image generation. This is a tool set that I believe many people will find incredibly useful in this field. If you've ever wanted to edit an AI-generated image, you'll know that while image creation is impressive, sometimes we just want to make small adjustments. However, those minor tweaks can often go awry, leaving us frustrated. It's those one or two perfect changes to a final image that can make all the difference. Let's talk about some tools that make this process easier. In-painting and out-painting are game changers. They allow you to modify specific parts of an image effortlessly. While some image generation software already offers these features, having them integrated directly into the model takes things to another level. For instance, Flux 1.1. Phil supports outpainting, which is incredible. Imagine starting with just an image of a person's eye and having the model generate an entire human figure around it. The possibilities for creative uses are endless. Don't be surprised if you start seeing people share their results on platforms like Twitter, TikTok, and Instagram, showcasing how AI can fill out incomplete images in astonishing ways. Additionally, there's structural conditioning with Flux, utilizing tools like Canny and Depth Maps. This feature lets you guide the output with a driving image to create hyper-realistic results. If you've ever wanted to shape an image with precision, this is now completely doable with AI. While similar capabilities exist in tools like Stable Diffusion, the higher quality that Flux offers makes it stand out.